Welcome to Healthy Eating for Stroke Prevention. What you eat and how you eat can be just as effective as some medications in preventing and managing strokes, heart disease, and certain chronic illnesses. Healthy eating can reduce your risk of a first and second stroke by improving your blood cholesterol levels, reducing your blood pressure, helping you manage your body weight, and controlling your blood sugar, also known as blood glucose. Healthy eating for stroke prevention includes planning your own meals in advance. Make a grocery list that has everything you need for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. This saves you money and makes it easier for you to make good choices when you're tired or busy. Cooking your own food more often means eating less processed foods and junk foods, which tend to be high in salt and bad fats like saturated fat and trans fatty acids. Processed foods and fast foods are also low in disease fighting nutrients. Drinking more water than any other fluid and avoiding sugar sweetened drinks has been shown to help build a healthier body. Before I continue, if you have kidney or renal failure, please follow the recommendations given by your renal dietitian because there are a couple of recommendations in this presentation that are not suitable for damaged kidneys. Let's take a moment to study the foods in this photo. Throughout the photo, there are plenty of fruits and vegetables. In the lower left corner, there are dried peas, beans, and lentils. Some people prefer to buy them canned, and that's a good choice too. You will also see fish, chicken, lean red meat, and milk. Although part of a healthy diet, they should be consumed in small amounts. There are also grain products such as whole wheat bread, rolled oats, pasta, and rice. This photo is a great example of the types of foods we should eat on a regular basis. First, I'll talk about fruits and vegetables. Research shows that eating a lot of them every day can really help to lower your risk of a stroke and heart attack. You might be asking, how much is a lot? You are encouraged to have them with every meal and snack. Diabetes Canada developed the Handy Portion Guide which teaches you to use your hands to get the proper serving sizes. Try having a fistful of fruit for dessert and a snack and two handfuls of vegetables at your main meals. Eating this many fruits and vegetables can be the biggest change for most people, but it is one of the most important habits to adopt. Another way to get the right amount of fruits and vegetables is to fill half of your plate with them just like this. If you can choose at least two different kinds of vegetables on your plate, it will be more interesting, more flavorful, and more nutritious. Fruits and vegetables don't have to be fresh. You can buy them frozen and canned and still be making a healthy choice. Just buy them without added salt or sauces whenever possible. In fact, having frozen and canned fruits and vegetables available can be cheaper, more convenient, and it gives you added variety. Let's talk about grain products. There is a large variety and the popular kinds in Canada include corn, rice, wheat, pasta, and oats. There are many more including barley, millet, and rye too. Bread is also a grain product and it includes parathas, pita, and naan. Whole grains or those that have been less processed are better choices. I will now talk about beans, peas, lentils, nuts, and seeds. These foods are high in fiber and protein and have great benefits to our overall health. If they're not already part of your daily eating habits, please try using them as a nutritious alternative to meat, poultry, fish, and eggs three or more times each week. This will reduce your risk of stroke, heart attack, and certain other chronic diseases while saving you money and making your meals more interesting. As I said earlier, you can buy them dried or canned, whichever you prefer. If you need ideas to start using more beans, peas, lentils, nuts, and seeds, you can add them to salads, soups, grains, and even have them in a simple peanut butter sandwich. 
Thinking about the foods we've discussed so far, do you know what they have in common? They have fiber, are low in fat, high in many disease-fighting nutrients, and all of them come from plants. Only the nuts are high in fat, but they have the good fats. Research from around the world shows that plant-based foods are the foundation to a healthier body and a lower risk of stroke, heart attack, Alzheimer's disease, and certain cancers. Now let's move on to meat, fish, poultry, and eggs. These foods are good sources of protein. Poultry includes chicken, turkey, and other birds. Remember to remove the fat and skin, which are bad for your health. Eat red meat such as beef, veal, pork, and goat about once each month. Eggs, poultry, and fish can be enjoyed every week as healthier choices of animal protein if you're not vegetarian. In North America, we tend to eat more of these foods than is necessary. To choose the correct serving size, you can use your hand or plate again. The size and thickness of the palm of your hand or one quarter of a dinner plate is how to measure the correct serving size. Milk products, including yogurt and cheese made from cows and goats, are healthy when you have them about two or three times a day and you choose the low fat options. These products are good sources of protein, but like meat, fish, poultry, and eggs, they can be high in cholesterol and high in unhealthy saturated fats, which can damage your arteries if you consume too much. This is especially true of hard cheeses like cheddar. Speaking of fat, there are many fats and oils that are good for you. They include soft margarines, vegetable oils, canola and grapeseed oil, olives and olive oil, avocado and avocado oil, and oils made from nuts and seeds. The fats to avoid are coconut oil and coconut milk, palm oil, any foods with hydrogenated fat listed on the label, and animal fats such as butter and lard. These fats and oils are very high in saturated fat, and some are high in trans fatty acids. Remember that all fats and oils, even the good ones, are high in calories and can cause unwanted weight gain if you eat too much. Processed and fast foods such as sliced meat sandwiches, potato chips, fried chicken, along with desserts and other sweets like cake and cookies seem to be everywhere we go. They are tempting because they can be eaten quickly and are often cheaper to buy than healthier, whole or natural foods I've been talking about. These convenience items also taste good, but that's because they're high in fat and sugar, also known as carbohydrate, and high in salt, also known as sodium. Eating these foods most days of the week can be dangerous for our blood pressure, blood cholesterol, blood sugars, and weight. They increase our risk for a stroke and heart attack, plus other illnesses too. It's easier to avoid convenience foods when you eat nutritiously before you leave your home. Making a menu and grocery list one or two times each week is another helpful tip that I referred to at the beginning of this presentation. Have you heard of the new Canada's Food Guide? What about the Mediterranean diet or even the DASH diet? Instead of calling them diets, let's call them healthy eating guidelines that have been proven in many countries to improve heart and brain health. Everything I've recommended to you follows their guidelines. Here's Canada's food guide. When you look at this photo, you can see how it demonstrates the plate method of serving sizes. Fruits and vegetables fill half of the plate, while grains fill one quarter of it, and the protein-rich foods, such as beans, chicken, nuts, and yogurt, fill the remaining one quarter of the plate. Most of the plate has plant-based foods on it. This Mediterranean diet pyramid gives you an idea of how frequently we should eat certain foods. The bottom of the pyramid shows the foods we should eat more often, and the top of the pyramid shows the foods we should eat less often. Notice that meat is to be eaten monthly, while fish, eggs, and poultry should be eaten weekly. You are encouraged to use milk products, the low-fat ones, 
and beans, lentils, nuts, and seeds as their alternatives daily when possible. As for the wine in this poster, please discuss alcohol intake with your doctor first. It's common advice to avoid alcohol for several months after a stroke. Also, the World Health Organization has reported that there is no safe level of alcohol intake, including wine. So please do not start drinking wine because of this poster or because it's a common Mediterranean practice. The DASH diet stands for Dietary Approaches to Stopping Hypertension, which is high blood pressure. High blood pressure is a major risk factor for stroke and heart disease. This eating guideline can also improve your blood cholesterol and blood sugar levels. The recommendations are similar to everything I've been teaching you, including more plant-based foods in your daily routine. If you would like more information and recipes, please read the nutrition section found in the My Guide for Stroke Recovery Binder and visit Unlock Food by the Dietitians of Canada, as well as the Heart and Stroke Foundation and Diabetes Canada websites. Remember to think of food as medicine. Thank you for your time.